You've probably heard people say, it's in your genes. It's one of those phrases that sounds final, like your DNA has already written the full story of your life. But what if I told you that's not true? That your genes are more like a script, and your experiences are the director choosing which scenes to play out. That's the essence of epigenetics, the study of how environment, stress, nutrition, and even relationships can switch genes on or off, shaping health, behavior, and emotion across a lifetime. Let's start with the basics. Inside nearly every cell of your body sits the same DNA, the same blueprint. Yet your brain cells look nothing like your liver cells, and your skin acts nothing like your heart. Why? Because different sets of genes are turned on or silenced depending on what that cell needs to do. Epigenetic mechanisms like DNA methylation, histone modification, and non-coding RNAs act like light switches and dimmers. They don't change your genetic code, they change how that code is read. Think of it this way. Genetics writes the words, but epigenetics chooses the tone and timing. Here's where things get really interesting for mental health. Every thought, every stressor, every nurturing moment sends biochemical signals into the body. Those signals influence hormones, immune mediators, neurotransmitters, and ultimately gene expression. Chronic stress, for example, increases cortisol and activates inflammatory pathways. Over time, this can lead to methylation patterns that suppress genes related to resilience and activate genes linked to inflammation and anxiety. But safety, connection, and mindfulness can do the opposite. They can restore healthy gene expression, promoting repair, balance, and growth. Our internal state, in other words, is constantly talking to our DNA. Research in epigenetics has shown that trauma can leave a biological signature, a kind of molecular memory that persists even after the event has passed. This is not about weakness, it's about adaptation. The body, in its wisdom, adjusts gene expression to survive the environment it's in. If you grow up in chaos or deprivation, your body learns vigilance, tightening stress circuits, heightening alertness. If you grow up in safety, your body learns regulation, flexibility, calmness, openness. But these patterns, while once protective, can become maladaptive later in life. And that's where healing begins. Not by erasing what happened, but by offering new experiences of safety, new signals that can rewrite the script. Epigenetics doesn't stop with us. Studies show that certain epigenetic markers can pass down through generations, affecting children and even grandchildren. For example, descendants of people exposed to famine or war often show altered stress responses and metabolic patterns decades later. It's as though the body carries ancestral memory, whispering the story of what came before. That realization is profound. It means healing ourselves is also healing future generations. Epigenetic change doesn't happen in isolation. It's deeply linked to all our regulatory systems. The HPA axis managing stress. The HPT axis balancing metabolism. The HPG axis influencing hormones. The gut-brain axis modulating inflammation and neurotransmitters. And the immune system translating psychological experience into molecular action. Each of these systems feeds back into gene expression. When one becomes dysregulated, say chronic cortisol from stress, it ripples through the others. That's why an integrative approach matters so much. We can't separate mind from body or body from environment. From a functional medicine standpoint, 
we can explore the epigenetic landscape through biomarkers, especially those related to methylation, inflammation, and detoxification. Testing might include homocysteine as a marker of methylation efficiency, MTHFR and COMPT genotypes, offering insight into detoxification and neurotransmitter metabolism. Glutathione levels, reflecting antioxidant capacity, inflammatory cytokines, and oxidative stress markers to explore the immune landscape. With specialized testing, we can even look at individual genes related to several systems, getting an idea of how these genes behave in the larger picture. But here's the thing, these tests are not destiny either. They're tools to understand your body's current narrative. And once you know the story, you can edit it. So how do we support our epigenetic expression? The research points to a simple truth. The basics matter deeply. Nutrition, folate, B12, choline, zinc, and other methyl donors support healthy DNA methylation. Antioxidants from fruits and vegetables protect against oxidative stress. Movement. Exercise influences gene expression related to metabolism, mood, and longevity. Sleep. Deep sleep regulates hormonal rhythms and DNA repair processes. Mindfulness and connection. Practices like meditation, breathwork, and meaningful relationships calm the stress response, directly influencing gene activity in immune and inflammatory pathways. Detoxification and environment. Reducing exposure to heavy metals, endocrine disruptors, and chronic inflammation lowers the epigenetic burden. And perhaps most powerful of all, inner work. Therapy, reflection, and spiritual practice can transform the meanings we attach to our experiences. When perception shifts, physiology follows. What's striking is that epigenetics validates what ancient traditions have said for centuries. Consciousness and body are not separate. Our internal world, beliefs, emotions, presence, can literally sculpt our biology. In this way, epigenetics is the biology of transformation. It's the meeting place of science and soul, where trauma becomes growth and memory becomes evolution. So when we say, it's in my genes, maybe what we really mean is, it's in my story. And stories can be rewritten. Every act of self-care, every moment of awareness, every time we choose compassion over fear, we're sending new instructions to ourselves. We're participating in our own evolution. If there's one thing I hope you take away, it's this. You're not fixed, you're dynamic. Your body, mind, and spirit are in constant conversation. Epigenetics is one of those conversations made visible. And when we learn to listen to the signals of stress, of nourishment, of emotion, we can guide that dialogue toward coherence, toward wholeness, toward healing. We are not the victims of our genes, we are the authors of our expression. If this content resonated with you, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for additional topics in integrative psychiatry. In the description below, you'll find links to my blog where I cover this material in written form, my practice where I work with those in Washington and Minnesota, and my personal site where I host training for clinicians in this and several other topics. Until next time, take care.